Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence demo of PS Knee. So this is an open source mod chip for the original PlayStation. We're going to focus on the branch of code that's specifically written for the Arduino family of boards. We're going to use an Arduino Nano. Um, this is the Elegoo Nano, which is basically a Chinese knockoff of the same thing. Uh, this costs about $2 and change on Amazon. So unfortunately, it's not as simple as just plugging the USB into your computer and using the Arduino IDE to dump the code from GitHub onto the chip. That'll work, but when you program it that way, what happens is it adds in a bootloader. That bootloader takes about one second to boot up, which unfortunately uh, produces a delay that's outside of the tolerance that the PlayStation has before it needs to start seeing the signal that we're trying to inject. So the way to make that work is you would have to drill a hole in the side of your PlayStation and power on the chip through the USB using a USB battery prior to powering on the PlayStation. Um, and then the chip will work, but I don't really think that's an elegant solution. So what we need to do instead is program it through SPI, which stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. It's these six pins here. Um, basically, we're going to put a header on there and then use those six pins to dump the code. And when we do that, uh, we get rid of the bootloader. So as soon as you power it on, it starts executing immediately. So in order to program it through SPI, uh, we're going to use an Arduino Uno board as an ISP. Okay, so let's get the UNO set up as an ISP. I have a fresh install of Arduino here. Basically, we need to load the Arduino ISP sketch onto the UNO. Um, and so if you go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, this is where the sketch is. So we're just gonna check in the tools, make sure that we've got Arduino UNO selected. Um, you can see it's already plugged into the Mac and it's already auto-detected it. So now we're just going to upload this sketch. Now our Arduino Uno is ready to be used as an ISP. So you'll see if we hold the shift key here um, and hover over the upload button, it'll say upload using programmer. And that's how we're gonna leverage the Uno as an ISP to program the Nano. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is solder the header onto the SPI bus of the Nano. So we'll go ahead and get our header pin out here. And this is the little six pin header that came with the Nano. So basically, we're just going to stick these pins through here and solder it on. Okay, so now we need to wire the Nano to the Uno. Um, so to do that, I went to Google and typed in Arduino as ISP. Um, we see the first result here from Arduino.cc. Scrolling down this page, we see our pinouts on the Nano here. Um, so VTG is going to go to plus 5 on the Uno. Ground is going to go to ground on the Uno. We need to figure out Mossy, Miso, SCK, and Reset. So in order to do that, I went to Instructables and searched Uno Nano. Um, basically on this page here, if we scroll down a little bit, we see the pinouts. So on the Uno, we've got 13, 12, 11, and 10 going to SCK, Miso, Mossy, and Reset. So we're going to bring 13, 12, 11, and 10 into those four pins there. And then like I said, plus 5 and ground on the UNO. So let's go ahead and wire that up. So we'll start by wiring up the UNO. We know from our diagram that we're going to use pins 13, 12, 11, and 10 on the UNO. Those are right here on the digital bus. So we'll start there. So now 13, 12, 11, and 10 are installed and color coded. Next we'll do plus 5 and ground. Now to make this easy, I'll wire this into a breadboard. Okay, so now we have 13, 12, 11, 10, ground, and plus five. Now we'll wire in the SPI interface from the Nano, and you can see that on the bus here, we've got pin one is down in the corner. So we know from our diagram, pin one goes to MISO, and that's 12 on the UNO. Pin two goes to VTG, and that's gonna be plus five on the UNO. Pin 3 goes to SCK, that's going to be pin 13 on the UNO. Pin 4 goes to Mossy, which is 11 on the UNO. Pin 5 goes to Reset, which is 10 on the UNO. And pin 6 goes to Ground. Alright, now our Nano is wired up to an UNO to use it as an ISP. Um, so the next thing we'll do is plug our USB cable into the UNO and we'll plug the other end of this cable into the MacBook. All right, so now we've got everything plugged in. The next thing we need to do is get the code loaded on the Nano. So I just went to Google and typed in PSNE. You can see the first result here is the GitHub repo. 
So I'll just pull that up. Basically, I just downloaded it as a zip, unzipped it, and opened the Inno file, which opens with the Arduino IDE here. Um, real quick, just something to note, looking at the releases, we downloaded version 701, which was released on August 17th. Um, so I'll leave this GitHub page up because we're going to come back to it and look at these pinouts in a little bit. Um, but there's some really good info on here on how it works. You guys should definitely read through that. So let's flip back over to the IDE here. A lot of good info up here. The only thing that we need to do is uncomment this define Arduino board. Um, there's a branch of the code that also works with ATtinys. I gave that a try. I could get it working. Maybe I'll reapproach that in the future. Um, but for now, we're just going to uncomment define Arduino board. So up here in tools, we're going to switch to our board to Arduino Nano. Um, if you have an older version of the IDE, it might not be built in. You just have to go to Boards Manager and type in Nano and install this Arduino AVR boards. You can see right here it's got Arduino Nano support. So back in our Tools menu, we've got Arduino Nano selected. The processor is an Atmega 328P. If you look at the chip on your Nano, it should actually say Atmega 328P on the top of it. Um, even though it's plugged in, the port doesn't show up because we're using it uh, as an ISP. So in order for that to work, we need to go to our programmer and select Arduino as ISP. Um, now when we hover over the upload button, if we hold down the shift key, you can see upload using programmer. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And now you can see it's done uploading. So the code has been successfully loaded onto the Nano. Um, so now back in here, we know that we need to do VCC is going to be a 3.5 volt, um, and we're going to use ground as well. And then we need to on the Arduino Nano to use pins 9, 8, 7, and 6 uh, to go to gate, data, sub Q, and SQCK. Uh, the BIOS pins, I think, are for either PAL or really old versions of the PlayStation. I didn't have to use them on the version that I'm using, uh, so you might want to do some research there and see if you need those, but I didn't. All right, so let's go ahead and get wires plugged into pins 9876 as well as VN and ground. Okay, so before we wire this up, we're just gonna test to make sure that our code got dumped on there properly. Um, to do that, we're gonna use the Arduino Uno again, and I just have two wires coming off of 3.3 volts and ground. Um, it's plugged into a power source here. So we're just gonna throw some power at this board and look at what it does. So I'll start by hitting ground to ground and 3.3 volts to V in and it's probably kind of hard to see but there's only one light lit up of the four and it's lit up at about half brightness so I still don't understand why but I figured out if you move the 3.3 volts to pin 2 on the SPI bus which is V in on SPI you'll see both lights come on uh, and stay solid and that's what we want to see when there's two lights on solid that means that the injection is happening so very quickly we'll look at how to test. Um, this one I only programmed through the USB. We didn't do the SPI interface for this one. Um, but if I hit ground and again pin 2 on the SPI bus, what you'll see is that the second light goes through a couple second delay before it turns on. So I'll hit it one more time and you can see now it turns on. Um, so this one works, but that delay is just outside of what the PlayStation will tolerate. So now we know that the bootloader is non-existent on this one, and we can proceed with wiring it up. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut up six pieces of 30 gauge stranded wire here. You can use wire a little bit bigger than that. Uh, this is just what I have laying around, and it'll work for what we're trying to do. Um, so before we start to solder that stuff on, what we're going to do is cut off these header pins that we soldered on earlier. Um, you can take the time to desolder them if you want, but I'm just going to cut them straight off. All right, so now that we have our pins removed, what we'll do is start by wiring the red wire, uh, what we're going to use for V in to pin 2 on the SPI bus. Okay, next we'll solder our black wire to ground. Alright, so now we have our power wires done. The next thing we'll do is solder the four remaining wires to pins 9, 8, 7, and 6 on the Nano.
All right, now we've got all the wires connected to our Nano. Um, so the next thing we'll do is open up our PlayStation and get that prepped to solder this board in. All right, so here I have an original PlayStation and this is a model SCPH 7001. So we'll start by just taking out all six of the screws in the bottom. All right, now we'll flip it over and we'll pull the top off. Now we'll unplug all four of these plugs. Now we'll lift the optical reader up and out of the way and we need to take out three screws. Now this protective piece is just taped on so we'll just pull this off and we can see right here we have a PU20 motherboard. Uh, so now we'll go look up the wiring diagram for this board. Okay, so now we have to figure out where the wires go on the motherboard, and I started by looking in the zip file that shipped with the GitHub repo, the PSNE version 7 diagram.zip. This is a collection of wiring diagrams for a bunch of different models of the PlayStation motherboard. Unfortunately, the PU20 that we have isn't in this lineup, um, so I'll show you guys how I figured it out. One of the main differences between this mod chip and all the historical mod chips are that this one uses SQ, CK, and sub Q to implement a way better attack. But what that means is there's tons of wiring diagrams out there for historic mod chips, um, but none of them use these two pins. So we're going to have to figure out where those two pins are. So to start that off, I went to Google, did an image search on PU20 mod chip. And the second image here, if we go to this page, we can see that um, they've got a nice little diagram of our board and they've got one VDD which is three and a half volts and eight is ground and then they've got five and six which are gate and data um, so now we know where to put those four wires we've got two more wires we've got to figure out and that's SQCK and sub Q so I found this diagram for the PU20 US NTSC board on the psxdev.net forum so this thread is awesome. It's chock full of all the information. This is where I found out about PSNE. Um, if you just read through all the different pages on here, it'll explain everything. And anything that's missing, you can find in this thread. Somebody's already asked it. So now we know where all six of our wires are going to go. Um, we've got two here. We've got four more over here. And then we know uh, 9, 8, 7, and 6 are going to go to gate, data, sub Q, and SQCK. So let's go ahead and get that wired up. Okay, so I put the Arduino up here in this little pocket. Um, when the top goes on, it makes a nice little home for it. And you can see the lights through these vents, which is nice. So now I'm just going to go ahead and run all these wires and get them soldered on. Alright, now we've got our mod chip all wired in, we'll put the PlayStation most of the way back together and test it out and make sure it works. Alright, so now we've got it most of the way back together, we'll plug power into it and make sure this chip turns on, and then we'll finish it up. Alright, so now when I hit the power button we should see the two lights come on solid, and they do, we're good to go. Alright, so here's my original Tony Hawk Pro Skater disc for the PlayStation. You can see how scratched up it is. So I've made a backup of it here um, just by copying it. And now I'll be able to play this and store this so it won't get any more scratched up. So let's throw this in the PlayStation, fire it up, and see if it worked. Alright, so I've gone ahead and used a capture card to record the PlayStation booting with our Tony Hawk backup. This isn't live. Um, this is all pre-recorded. But basically it's going to start with the white Sony scene that we always see. Um, and then the next screen we'll get to is the black PlayStation screen. 
By the time we get to this screen, we know that the injection has happened successfully. So basically the way that it works is the PlayStation is looking for a four-letter code. In our case, it's SCEA. Um, and that code is pressed into an area of the CD called the wobble. So you can't burn to the wobble, which is what prevents you from copying games. With the PlayStation, they actually press that four-letter code into the wobble from the factory. So that's what our mod chip does, is injects those four letters onto the data pin, uh, which is where the PlayStation is looking for those letters. So there's three different codes. Um, what they use for copy protection is also what they use for region protection. So there's SCEA, SCEE, and SCEI, which stands for Sony Computer Entertainment America, Europe, and International. International being the Japanese wing of the company because it is a Japanese company. But basically, when you turn the PlayStation on, the laser moves to the beginning of the disc and looks for those four letters. So the first generation of mod chips just spammed the data line with those four letters forever. Uh, and that totally worked at the beginning. But Sony caught on to it, so the mod chip community responded with stealth mod chips, which is kind of the second generation, where instead of spamming the data line forever, uh, they would do it on a timer. Uh, but this obviously made it more complicated, so now they couldn't just do a timer because what about games where you have to have a second disc? So they had to do things like wire into the switch for the lid, so that when the switch closes, you close the lid on the second disc, it again spams the data line for a preset amount of time before it stops. Um, and that's really what makes PS Nii superior is for the last decade or so, all of the mod chips have kind of been the stealth mod chip. PS Nii uses subchannel Q and SQCX pins to actually look at the position of the laser and will only spam the data line when the laser is in those sectors uh, for the wobble. So really, it's kind of the nail in the coffin, right? And you can't really ever detect this. It'd be really hard to do. Um, fortunately for Sony, the original PlayStation is about four generations back, and you can't really buy new games anymore. Um, so they're never going to come out and fix it. But what it means is, for the rest of the world, with the $2 Arduino mod chip, you can basically mod any PlayStation in the world. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun putting it together. The original PlayStation mod chip was the first thing I ever soldered is how I learned to solder. Uh, so this was a lot of fun for me. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.